Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is a round 7 game from the Qatar Masters Open 2015 between Yevgeny Tomashevsky playing on the white end against Daniel Yuffa. Uh, what captured my attention with this one was uh, an important middle game uh, assessment, uh, an important middle game uh, evaluation that was made in this uh, Kings Indian uh, defense Makaganov variation. So let's have a look. As mentioned, we had for a King's Indian defense with move 5, knight f3, and only then on move 6, h3, this one here denoting the Makaganov variation. A couple things to point out with the h3 move. For one, it avoids any uh, any line related to bishop g4. Uh, I don't believe that this is a move that will be too often seen at the uh, highest level, but uh, it is a move to uh, play uh, against the dark squares to employ some dark square strategy to eliminate the piece who controls the two central dark squares and then look to strike in some way at the d4 point. Uh, moreover, the h3 move is. Uh, preparing, in some cases, uh, a g4 advance, and this is a uh, this is a desirable move, uh, or this this can be a desirable move uh, against Black's uh, common pawn break in the King's Indian defense uh, of f5. It makes that that f5 advance a bit more mm, critical. Black will have to uh, uh, weigh the position, uh, certainly. This is uh, where the king resides, and if there is g4 in before f5, this means that the g-file can potentially open up, and uh, black can turn out to be vulnerable with their king. White, keep in mind, has not yet committed their king to the king's side, so uh, moves like this uh, are, are quite feasible. King could maybe look to castle on the queen side if g4 is in. Okay, so play follows with e5. White closes it up immediately. Queen knight will have to find a different route, d7 or a6. Knight h5, eyeing up f4. White prevents that knight from even stepping foot on f4. This is important to do if... You think you can just challenge a knight on f4. Um, mm, that's a bit tricky. Uh, for one, you wouldn't want to ch exchange your dark square bishop for the knight on f4. Uh, regarding your bishops on the white end, uh, the bishops on the white end here, it's the dark square bishop who fits in better with the current pawn structure. Pawns control light. Your dark square bishop is the one who complements that pawn structure well. You wouldn't want to give up your dark square bishop for the knight, that's sure. That's for sure. And you really wouldn't want to challenge the knight or capture a piece on the f4 square in general, because then you're having to contend with a couple things. For one, uh, this g7 bishop is brought to life. The main diagonal is opened without with the e5 pawn absent, and also... There's then the e5, or excuse me, the e file that uh, can be made use of by black. So uh, the idea here is, you know what? I'm not even going to let you to step, let you step foot on f4. G3 it is. This isn't a developing move. Uh, it's a weakening move, but it's it's important to secure that f4 square. Squares here that are weakened are light squares on uh, white's king side, f3 and h3, so some care needs to be taken, of course, by white. So what follows now is a5. This is a, mm, a move that interferes with a long-term idea that white uh, can employ on the queen side, which is to say a queen side expansion, a3, b4, c5, striking at d6, playing, uh, you might say it as 
uh, playing on the side of the board where one has space, where one has a space advantage, and in this position white has a space advantage uh, due to their pawn on uh, due to the white pawn on black side of the board on the queen side. White has a queen side space advantage. A5 makes this idea by white a bit more time consuming and it will secure a black knight's position once on c5. He will not be so easily kicked from that square with b4 anymore. Okay. White gets on with development. The queen was struck at. Queen e8. This is a good square for the queen. Uh, from here she is, uh, well, for right now, indirectly protecting the knight on h5. And this is this is important to note because the knight on h5 can find itself tactically vulnerable uh, with what it is black wants to do in the form of pawn breaks f5 in other words we can very easily see the knight on h5 become unprotected for when or if f5 hits on e takes f if g takes f the knight would be unprotected you know, if the queen is still on her home square, the knight on h5 would be unprotected and, again, tactically vulnerable. So the queen is there to lend some uh, support to the h5 knight. It's one of the ideas behind that. Uh, she also, you know, even another thing to note, uh, the queen on e8, uh, it's not just the king side, some type of king side influence that the queen has, but even ideas related to uh, this... Uh, a4 square I have seen in some lines. Uh, she has it. She can have her presence felt on the queen side as well. Um, this is again once. This this is also related to this idea of an a3 and b4 expansion. Um, if white is going right for a move like a3, you know this can now be played right away. A move like a4. The queen and rook are there to lend enough support to a4. And now this knight is, well, he's no longer just thinking about c5, but now maybe even b3 and d4. Um, the short story here is that the queen has an influence on both sectors of the board, queen side and king side. Okay, bishop e2 to follow. Knight a6. Knight d2. The knight is hit now twice. He's only defended once. What is black going to do about this? Nothing. Uh, black is offering up a pawn. Uh, about seven minutes was spent on this last move. Knight c5, applying pressure to the center. Improving, uh, improving the knight's position. And again, offering up a pawn. Uh, a pawn that is declined. White does not go in for bishop takes knight, but instead bishop e3. Uh, if white is to take and then take again, uh, I believe the main uh, compensation here is black having the bishop pair. And I think the follow-up would be f5. Uh, not the mm, tempting move, knight to d3, giving check. The king now going uncastled and then getting the pawn because he maybe is running the risk of being trapped. He is a fiend keto knight and those aren't good. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's quite short on squares and he runs the risk of getting trapped. Already there's rook h to b1 and where is he going? Black is pretty much locked in to a bishop d7 and then... Uh, you know, there's knight to b5, and once again, he's a bit short on square. So my point here is that if white goes in for takes, takes, uh, the idea is not to just land a check and then try and grab that pawn right back. Uh, this is a true gambit. This is uh, uh, this is basically black saying, you know what, okay, I'm going to play this position down a pawn. Let's, let's try and open up the position, and uh, my compensation... I'm going to try and show is having the bishop pair.
He's going, Black would try to put that light square bishop in particular, the unopposed light square bishop, uh, to good use, cracking at the light squares e4. Uh, we could have queen takes, rook takes, but if I had to pick one side, I would definitely be sticking with the side that has the material. I like, uh, well, not just not just because it's having a material plus, but uh, white maintains good control over the critical square in this position, and the critical square is e4. Uh, if white does not maintain control over e4, it's a much different story, uh, because this would mean black can, let's say, push their e-pawn, and then there's ideas possibly with a break on the e-file. Certainly the main diagonal would be opened up, and it becomes a much more volatile position, a much more dynamic position, but by maintaining control over e4, it's a much more controlled position, something that white would be... Uh, looking to achieve, looking to keep in the position, control over the position, not letting it uh, uh, open up so easily. White would maintain control, should maintain control over the e4 square in this position. Anyhow, we didn't go for that. White didn't shoot for bishop takes knight here, uh, going for the win of a pawn. Instead it was bishop to e3. And this move, and this is the part where, yeah, this is the part in the game that I found instructive. This move is threatening something that is very serious. Uh, the reply by black was f6, and this is securing the knight on h5. There is now no longer the possibility to win a pawn with bishop takes, and then queen takes. The queen is now there to support h5 after g takes h5. Uh, why does black not go for f5? It's because we would take, and you can't take back on f5. How do you do it? Taking with a piece, a bishop or a rook, is running into g4, and black is losing material, and taking with the pawn is dropping the knight. So that's why we're having just a single step, but this is not a good idea, because, well, as we will see, uh, a very nice sequence of moves uh, allows white to establish a very good position, let's just say. Uh, the move played was f6, a better move would have been to avoid bishop takes knight, uh, returning the knight to f6 at this stage. Maybe even playing to d7, and only then considering uh, an f5 break. Uh, but the move played in the game was f6, and here is your pop quiz. What move or what move sequence... Uh, would you play as white in this position? What would your, let's say, middle game plan be? Uh, what would be a, a good idea in this position as white? If you'd like to, go ahead, pause the video, see what move sequence or see what uh, plan you would come up with uh, as white in this position. Okay. Now, I know this is going to come off as very strong, but I feel very strong about the following statement. <laughs> I feel that this is a winning sequence of moves. This idea that white goes for is one that, mm, if you review it with the computer, the computer will say that it's a slight advantage for white, but... I don't believe that the computer it will be able to accurately assess this position for what it really is. Uh, the move played, or the move sequence that is played, is bishop takes, knight on c5, 
d takes c bishop takes knight well bishop takes the other knight g takes h and now the key move g4 this position right here is well what what exactly is going on here we have the knight pair <laughs> Uh, the knights versus the bishop pair. Um, who stands better? When we look at the pawns, st still all pawns remain on board, and this doesn't. Uh, this is not a great help to uh, the bishops. The more pawns on the board, well, they kind of get in the way of the bishops. Uh, it will likely to be the case we have instances of fixed pawns if we're working with still all pawns on the board. Uh, we do have fixed pawns here. Uh, they get in the way of the bishops. They block these fixed pawns. They block diagonals. Uh, it's difficult for the bishops to be active or, or become activated. Uh, white in this position has excellent control. By playing this g4 move, it locks down on the desirable f5 break. It controls this f5 square. And by maintaining control over this f5 break, uh, that is a big deal. Without the f5 break, the light square bishop struggles to do anything productive. But it doesn't stop there. Without the f-pawn break, it is also the black rooks who suffer. What will be their constructive plan? What can they bring to the table? How will their presence be felt? It's difficult to determine uh, how that uh, comes about. Uh, white has excellent control in this position and white is better the computer um, is currently reading at 0.43 with these next few moves it will shift in fact I'll just uh, put it up here on the screen from this point throughout uh, the game and what you're going to see is a slight shift it'll drop down uh, for some but we have a position here where black lacks any uh, good pawn breaks. There is not a good pawn break for black to make. There is no good way to uh, exchange pawns, make a pawn break, make an exchange, and help your pieces. This is something that is lacking on the black end. White has plenty of time in this controlled position to improve the knights. Uh, one idea is to drop a knight into f5 for when or if he is captured. Well, he probably will need to be captured. A knight on f5 is just a great, great bother. A tremendous piece on f5. And if he is captured, uh, we could be taking as white with the e-pawn, and that opens up a new square for another knight on e4, and he's amazing. This is a, this is a close, this is a controlled position. This is an excellent environment for the side who has the knights. Again, there is not a good pawn break for black. The only two pieces that black works with for these next handful of moves are the queen and the dark square bishop. And I could see that as being the case. I could see that the dark square bishop would have some play. When we consider the move g4, white's last move here, this is the, these are the main squares that are given up. The f4 square is now a hole in the white position. The f4 square is a square that already has uh, pawn support. Uh, this is weak, uh, but that will not be enough to inconvenience white. Yes, there are dark square weaknesses, but 
the strong grip over f5, reducing the mobility of the light square bishop, not allowing the f5 break, the opening up of the f-file for the black rooks to come to life. Black can do nothing here. This is a, a slow boa constrictor-like position. White makes slow, steady progress and basically squeezes black well. It could arrive at that type of... Uh, we could go into that type of scenario, but uh, the game ends a bit more abruptly. But uh, this is this is the main point in the game. This is the main uh, feature here, this middle game assessment. Uh, black really needed to better appreciate this stranglehold that white can uh, employ. Uh, the giving up both bishops and then playing this key move g4 not allowing this break white again has excellent control over this position what followed was queen g6 f3 queen h6 again black is looking to play on these dark squares and it must be said it's very difficult to suggest what black can do better here h takes f takes he can't take towards the center this rook was unprotected the queen gives a check white is now uncastled but this isn't a, a great bother again there's great control in this position king d1 bishop h6 knight f3 the queen is hit queen g3 white is castling by hand black again is only playing uh, in the only way that they can play on the weakened dark squares. White has excellent light square control. Rook to e1, rook f7, rook h to f1. The queen is being harassed at this point, and white has all day to organize their pieces. These knights, there aren't better square. I mean, yes, there are better squares, but what great squares that these knights uh what great positions these knights have right here the f3 and c3 squares excellent posts they could soon improve as mentioned getting into uh, this strong post on f5 also after this uh, capture i didn't point it out but after this f pawn is capturing on g4 an additional pawn is exchanged with that but this is now something that white can uh, play against the backward f6 pawn so, so something like doubling the rooks on the f file and then trying to get in a knight to f5 move yeah the evaluation is just you know going off the charts at this point approaching zero or approaching two queen f4 knight h4 the knight gets into f5 rook takes and now there's always this uh concern with the knight for bishop exchange there, what remains is a really strong knight versus a bad bishop. You know, now it's now it's white who has some serious light square weaknesses. Uh, they have a dark square bishop and pawns on dark. Yes, good dark square control, but what about the other color complex? It's just not there. No good control over the light squares. So black throws in a check. Simply king b1. If king b3, this is not a good idea. a4, within this idea of b5. If knight takes, well, that's mate. And if pawn takes, this is a concern for white. It's leading to mate. So it's just king b1. Bishop f4. Unfortunately, this queen is short on squares now. She's actually going to be trapped. Rook d1, queen h2, knight e2, and after queen to f3, black already threw in the towel. Threat here is rook to h1, and the queen's dead. This is not the reason that black lost. Black did not lose this game because, you know, you could very easily, you know, at some let's say some some player you were to ask how'd you why'd you lose that game if the player i'm not and i'm not saying black would say this 
I'm sure Black knows where they went wrong, but uh, a player, if you were to ask them after they lost a game, how'd you, why'd you lose the game? If a less experienced player on the black end, let's just say, replied, I lost this, yeah, I got my queen trap. That's not the reason that they lost. The The issue was the middle game the decision in the middle game to allow this stranglehold in the position, allowing this sequence of moves. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes knight, and then g4. This right here is something that needed to be better assessed. This structural shift needed to be better assessed. Uh, it's true that black did not have to allow their queen to go into the white position and then try and play against the light squares. Um, but if you're not shooting for that, it is a slow death on the black end. Black needs to try something fast because if it's, if they treat it as a slow position, white is the one who can make far more productive moves to imp steadily improve their position. Whereas black would essentially be shuffling their pieces. Um, if, and again, this is very difficult to even suggest something on the black end, but if bishop to h6, I mean, we could play queen to e2, we could queenside castle, I don't know, this seems maybe pretty sensible to throw the king in the corner, white goes on this side, maybe there's a4, white plays a3, maybe the bishop plays here, white could play king to b1, White could play king to a2. Uh, white could play rook to g1 and then look to uh, reposition this knight. It, it could be maybe even before rook to g1. Let's say, I don't, I don't even know what to suggest here for black. Let's say b6. We could think about knight to g3, knight to h4, knight to f5. This this idea did take place in the game, the knight getting to f5, and this would still be present uh, in, in this position where black is not trying to invade with the queen along these dark squares. It's, again, just a position where white is the side who can make progress, and black, unfortunately, can do nothing but sit and, sit and wait or do what they did in the game, which is to try and play along the dark squares, the only squares that are weakened in the white position. So anyhow, I, I thought that this was uh, quite instructive. You don't get to see that uh, too often, this idea of investing uh, while well, giving up both bishops, playing against the bishop pair. But again, we as white here, uh, or a as white in this game, they had excellent control over the position. Yes, they gave up the bishop pair, but what followed was uh, a far more, uh, a, a much more favorable pawn structure one that kept control of the position, one that prevented this freeing break, f5, did not allow the light square bishop to come to life, nor uh, any of the black rooks, and it's either going to be a slow death or, well, as we saw in the game, uh, the queen ends up uh, getting trapped. Uh, anyhow, I found this quite instructive. I hope you did uh, as well, and... As usual, feel free to leave any feedback in the comment section below to this video, and I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.